Welcome, this is my 2006 Chrysler 300C with the Hemi. And I'm gonna install the Ape Performance E85 Flex Fuel Kit. The install was super easy. I'll show a little bit of it, but this video is not about this install. This video is about the reasons why I would choose to run my vehicle on E85 ethanol. Okay, so there's three main reasons why you would want to run your car on E85 ethanol. The first is more horsepower. The second is it's cheaper. And the third reason is it's better for the environment. Number one, more power. You know in a car like this, the 300C, if you run premium fuel, usually you get more power. It's not true on all cars, but on premium vehicles, that's true. Now the reason for that is because higher octane gas has a higher knock resistance. Now the knock resistance is basically how much you can squeeze the fuel without it going bang before you want it to. You want it to go bang exactly when you want it to. Now the benefit to that is that you can run more boost on your turbo, you can run more compression in your cylinders, you can advance the ignition timing further. All those things result in more power. Now, the issue is if you run low octane fuel, then the car, the ECU has to compensate for that by reducing the engine timing, reducing the boost, uh, reducing the power output basically. So the point of ethanol is twofold. First, it is about 106 octane. So it's a very high octane but that is only partially a benefit. And that is not a benefit that can be realized on most engines. Uh, simply increasing the octane doesn't always increase power. Now the second benefit is that ethanol burns 25% uh, more completely than gasoline, which means that all of the fuel you're injecting into the cylinder is burning and their flame front travels faster, but the combustion takes longer, which means as the piston is going on its downstroke, the ethanol fuel is expanding and burning the entire stroke down. Whereas gasoline, it is not burning as, as long uh, during the stroke. This results in more torque because you have more of a stroke impulse and more torque at RPM is more horsepower. The fact that ethanol has less energy density, you have to inject more ethanol, which is the purpose of these kits is to increase the amount of fuel that's injected. As a byproduct of that, you have more liquid volume being sprayed into the combustion chamber, which uh, cools the intake charge more. And also it is uh, ethanol alcohol, which has a better evaporative cooling effect than gasoline has. So for those two things, you get an increase in the evaporative cooling effect from your fuel, which means you have a cooler combustion charge and then you create more power because you have a cooler intake charge. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my car to my local private road that I've got access to where I can do some zero to 60 and quarter mile times. I've got a draggy device. This is a GPS based device that pairs with your smartphone and it can really give you precise zero to 60 and quarter mile times. It is basically as accurate as you can possibly get without actually going to a drag strip. So with the help of my draggy, we'll measure the performance zero to 60 and quarter mile using uh, premium 91 octane gas is in it right now. And then we'll switch it, we'll go fill up with E85 uh, ethanol fuel. And then we'll, I'll drive it around a little bit to let the computer relearn and then we'll do some more zero to 60 and quarter mile times. So I simply take the draggy device and stick it up on the roof and it's ready to go. I use my other phone down here and we're gonna connect to the draggy. Okay, I'll reset. Okay, so the first run was 788, zero to 60, and the quarter mile in 15.85. Uh, don't worry about the half mile, that's just me rolling out. So we'll go do another run. We'll come up for our second run, hit reset. I'm gonna prop power brake it a little bit.
Okay, that was a little bit better. We did zero to 60 in 7.78 and the quarter mile in 15.79. All right, rolling up for our third run. Let's reset. Power braking seemed to work. I'll do a little bit more this time. We had a little bit of wheel spin. That time we did zero to 60 in 7.79 and the quarter mile in 15.81. So uh, I think that's as good as we're gonna get about 7.8 to 60 and about 15.8 in the quarter. And we'll go put in some ethanol and we'll see how it does. Okay, so we just filled up with ethanol. I have my Ape app open and let's we'll see. It comes up right away, that's awesome. And it should just take a few seconds before the ethanol percentage starts to climb. Okay, so there it starts climbing pretty rapidly now. Up to 40% now that I'm driving it. It looks like we're already up at 65. Uh, that's about what the station sells is 65, so I doubt we're gonna see much higher. Okay, it's the next morning. Um, I got ethanol in the tank. I've driven it around for a little bit, so I'm pulling up uh, near my test track here and we'll do some runs. It, we're about the same temperatures yesterday. This time we've got almost a full tank of fuel. Let's go ahead and do some runs. First run, we did 7.28, 7.28 to 60 and the quarter mile in 15.5. So that's easily the best run I've done so far. Uh, seven point, we're about maybe half a second faster to 60. Um, all right, let's do some more runs. Okay, run number two. A little bit of wheel spin. All right, so the second run, we did zero to 60 and 7.4 and the quarter mile in 15.55. So zero to 60, a little bit slower, but the quarter about the same. Um, there's definitely some wheel spin on that run. All right, third run. Okay, so that time we did zero to 60 in 7.42 seconds and the quarter mile in 15.54. So great result there. So it looks like we slowed down a little bit. That first run might have been a little bit of a fluke, uh, maybe because things were a little bit cooler. I know when the transmission heats up, this car slows down. Uh, the shifts just aren't as fast. So maybe it just had a really fast shift or something at that 7.28 seconds to 60. Um, but we were running consistent 15 uh, fives in the quarter. And yesterday on 91 octane premium, we were running 15.8s, um, 15.7 to 15.8, pretty consistent also. So very, very good result there. So if we, we dropped about a third of us, uh, 0.3 seconds in the quarter, and we dropped about, um, uh, about the same, maybe half a second to 60, um, just depending, I guess, on fact, other factors. But consistent performance gained across the board. And again, this 
300C is completely stock. Um, 161,000 miles on the clock. 100% stock. Um, 5.7 liter Hemi. So again, we're up here at altitude about 6,000 feet above sea level. So it's gonna be a little bit slower, but all in all, really pleased with the performance bump. Um, there's definitely a gain there, um, definitely a gain. So there you go, that's the proof, it's faster. These draggies are about as accurate as you can get in, without going to the track. So, I mean, that's proof as proof can get. So let's move on to point number two. Okay, so as you saw right there, that's how you save money with E85. You saw that I was paying $3 a gallon, basically for E85, and regular, mid like regular 85 octane gas is $4 a gallon. Then you could also see that uh, premium was $4.65 a gallon. So that means that even if I get the cheapest gas, I'm paying a dollar a more a gallon than ethanol. And if I get premium, I'm paying $1.65 a gallon more. Now, when I first got into these ethanol kits on my Lexus several years back, I was counting on having ethanol be uh, 30 to 40 cents cheaper per gallon than gasoline, uh, regular gasoline. And I was doing my cost that it would be slightly cheaper, but I'd break even, but I would get more horsepower for the same cost. Basically, that was my calculus. The calculus has totally changed. Not only do you get more power now than you get on premium, but it's so much cheaper. Oh my God, I can't believe how much cheaper it is. I'm paying $3 a gallon for 106 octane gas. Now, there's a secondary part to that because ethanol has lower energy density than gasoline. 20 to 25% less miles per gallon is what you should expect. If you drive faster, maybe more than that. And if you have a turbo or supercharged car and you have a heavy foot, maybe more than that. That sounds like, well, why am I spending less on fuel if I'm gonna use more fuel? Is it is it gonna work out in the end? Well, check out the numbers on the screen. This is a calculation that uh, I've done for this Chrysler at the miles per gallon that you should expect on uh, 91 octane or premium gas, and then the miles per gallon on ethanol. And I've also done miles per gallon on regular fuel using the same prices that I paid today. So this shows you that after, let's uh, put in an arbitrary number there, a thousand miles, this is how much cheaper it is on ethanol. So you can extrapolate that throughout the year uh, and uh, throughout the rest of the vehicle's life. And you can see that a few hundred dollars on one of these ethanol kits starts to make a lot of sense. So the last part about saving you money is you're gonna be able to extend your oil changes and your oil filter changes and, and all of the bits of your engine are gonna last longer. Now, the rumors about ethanol corroding your fuel lines or your parts inside your engine, if your car has been made in the last 25 or 30 years, you are fine. There's two things you have to keep in mind when you convert a car to ethanol. Number one, ethanol is alcohol. It's really good at cleaning out all the nooks and crannies and passages in the engine, like it cleans off the carbon deposits on your valves inside the combustion chamber, and it cleans up your fuel lines. So on an older vehicle, sometimes if you run ethanol, um, the deposits left over from the gasoline will get swept up in the ethanol now that you've introduced a large amount of it and will be brought into your fuel injectors or into rails or your fuel filter. So it's recommended that you switch to ethanol and then after uh, about um, 600 to 1,000 miles, change your fuel filter. And that should uh, get all that junk out of there and then after that, you'll be nice and clean. So all that equates to longer oil change stretches. I have been stretching the oil changes out of my vehicles and I use Blackstone reports and they tell me every single time I send in an oil sample, wow, this one looks even better than the last one, you could stretch it out more miles. And partly that's because all my vehicles are secondhand and I take probably better care of them than the previous owners. But it's also because of the ethanol fuel is so much cleaner. It's keeping the oil cleaner. The oil lasts longer. Keeping the carbon deposits in the cylinders down. 
keeping your PCV valve working better because there's less carbon going through it, keeping your throttle body clean because there's less carbon going into your oil, which is then going through your PCV system. All of these things is just reduced with ethanol. So that is the second reason. Ethanol will save you money. So the last reason, the third reason, I think of the more of a bonus reason because you're gonna be driving anyway. So if you're gonna be driving, why not run cleaner fuel? So E85 ethanol actually has uh, like about 40% less uh, greenhouse gases in the total cycle. So what that means is from corn growing in the fields, being harvested, all the diesel that used is in that process, um, then to be refined in the refinery process and then blended with 15% uh, gasoline and then put on trucks and driven to the stations. All of that plus you driving around in your car burning your ethanol fuel is actually 40% cleaner, so to speak, than just driving around on gasoline. Now the reason for that is because, number one, the corn, the plants that are grown to produce ethanol obtain their carbon from the atmosphere. So they pull the CO2 from the atmosphere and use that to build their structure and you know live their lives. So that is being sequestered from carbon that is otherwise in the atmosphere. The second reason is that it's all domestically produced. It's all here in America. We burn it, produce it, use it, everything here in America. So the cornfields that I'm using to fuel my vehicles are here in Colorado uh, or just a state or two away. The corn is not going very far from where it's grown to where I'm using it. So we're not talking about pumping this stuff across pipelines from Canada. We're not bringing it in on ships from Saudi Arabia or Russia or all these places. It's a domestic fuel supply. And the third reason why it's cleaner is because it is basically clean alcohol. It's clean ethanol. So it burns uh, very clean and pure and there's basically nothing that comes out of there except for um, CO2 and some basic compounds. Whereas gasoline has all sorts of other things, benzenes and and all these volatile organic compounds, um, which when they burn, that's why catalytic converters were invented was because uh, of all these things that ethanol does not have. So for those three reasons, it is a clean green fuel source and it makes you go faster and it saves you money. So for all those reasons, I say run E85. I hope you stuck it out to the end. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. I'm gonna be doing another video on these E85 kits and the install in my wife's car. Uh, sometimes it's not as straightforward as it was on this car. And big thanks to APE, Alternative Performance Engineering. They gave me a little discount on this kit to post about it and give my thoughts. They had basically no strings attached. It was, they gave me a small discount and they just want me to post about it on social media. So this is my little initial review and install for this kit. And so far it's given, get a big thumbs up for me. I'm, I'm really happy with it. The kit literally just plugged in play in this 300. 10 minutes it took me to install, maybe less. It was really easy. Thanks again for watching. Hit subscribe, like the video, tell your friends. I'm gonna have more E85 content on this channel. Like I said, E85, I love it. Run E85. Just do a little unboxing so there's a nice installation manual really high quality you get the harness pairs of wires goes between each fuel injector plug here's the ape flex fuel module 3d printed case but high quality really nice it has a nice um, gm flex fuel sensor so that's also really good not a cheap one but a nice uh, continental one and then a section of hose that's already has crimped on fittings that's really wasn't expecting that but that's also very nice so that's what's in the ape flex fuel system for the chrysler vehicles